Hi and welcome to our second meeting in our workshop from zero to selenium. In this workshop, you'll study the basics of selenium in order to become the automation developer that you always wanted. In the previous meetup, we started with the basic installation, the requirements and dependencies, the Maven installation. We were introduced to Selenium WebDriver and we also saw the final project demo. In this meeting, we'll study what is a web element, we'll learn how to interact with it, and we'll study about Selenium locators. In the next meeting, we'll introduce test and G and test annotation, we'll make your code more reusable, and we'll talk about the project architecture and design. While in the last meetup, we'll create our tests, we'll study some advanced interaction with web pages, and we'll also add the report. As we studied in the previous meeting, HTML is a markup language. It is built upon hierarchy and tags. Each HTML tag can be transformed to a web element. A web element is any HTML tag that we have on the page and we can locate. A web element is interactable. We can perform several actions over it. If, for instance, we can click on it, we can get the text, we can get attribute of this uh, tag, for instance, the height and other stuff that we can know about this tag. And it's also our basic building block for the test. How do we locate this web element? In order to locate a web element, we use locators. Before we'll talk about locators, let's see a short example. We'll head over to Wikipedia. Each of those links or the title can be transformed to a web element since it's surrounded by an HTML tag. Also, the search button and the text box that we can insert our search term, all of them can be transformed to a web element. How do we locate it? Now we will study how to use one of the basic tools in our toolbox. We'll right click anywhere in the web page and we'll click inspect. Here you can see those are the developer tools of the Google Chrome. If you'll use Firefox or other browsers as well, you'll see probably a bit different uh, menu, but it's the same idea. So as you can see here, the element of the input box is marked, is marked in, in green and also the blue one is the element itself. Here you can see this the element has an ID. The ID is search input. We're going to use this ID very soon. Also, if you are not sure if you are viewing the element that you desire, you can click on this uh, box with the arrow inside and then you can mouse hover any element that you want and then you can choose the correct element that you'd like. In this example, I've chosen the Wikipedia title. If we look at the title, we can see that this tag is from type spam. The attributes of this tag, the only attribute is the class. It has several classes. How do we know that? Because each one of them is separated by space. You can see we have the central a dash text logo underline underline image and then we have space which means that the previous class is over and now we're referring to a new class if you are not sure about html class and what does it mean please go back to the previous video where we explain all of that just for the for the example this tag deals with the subtitle and as you can see i changed it i have changed it to rain. Of course, it's only changed it in the local instance in our browser. If I refresh the page and it will re-download the page, this will be deleted. I just wanted to demonstrate that this HTML tag is our HTML tag that we just talked about. Here you can see that one of the attributes of the input is the ID, the search input. ID, of course, is a CSS uh, attribute. It's not something related to our automation code, but since ID is unique, it's very useful for us to use ID and not other locators. So of course, you sometimes you can use classes and you can use other locators, but if you have an ID, always use that one. Let's go back to the slide. In the Wikipedia example, we saw the ID, which is the most robust way to locate an element. 
and also you saw the class name. Locating an element by class name is a very common usage. It also can be practical because in, in many times the class name appears only once and we can use it as an ID because it's unique. But we are not sure about it. So whenever we use a class name, we have to make sure that we don't locate the wrong element. One of the most popular usages of an element is a locating an element by expat. Locating by an expat, it means that we need to locate it by hierarchy. This is very hard to maintain and it's easily breakable. Here you can see on the screen the full path of one expat, which is the hierarchy of the web page. It starts with the HTML tag, then it goes down to the body, then to one of the containers, another section, and etc. and etc. This is a very tiresome and also easily breakable. By the way, nobody guaranteed to us that whenever the web page will be loaded, it will be in the same hierarchy, the same structure. Even if one of the elements of this structure will just slightly change or modify it, all of this expat won't be useful for us. So whenever you use expat, you need to consider if you really don't have any other option. Another disadvantage of using an expat is that expat is very slow as compared to other locators. Expat looks at the web page as a tree and it goes from the root and it drills down on it recursively. Think about a web page such as Amazon. Whenever you log into your account or whenever you navigate to amazon.com, you'll see different items and also your my homepage and another person homepage would look a bit different because we are focusing on different products. Also, based on my recent searches, the next time I will uh, navigate to amazon.com, I will see another web page. And if one of the elements I was using to locate it by an expat, probably now there will be another element instead, or even a group of elements which will change the whole hierarchy of this page. Let me explain the expat with a short explanation. I want to draw it for you guys. As I told before, we can look at the expat as a tree. We can look at the web page as a tree. At the root of it, we have the HTML tag. This HTML tag have a child and one of the child is the head. The other child is the body, for instance. Inside the body, we have, we can continue to drill down our expat. We have this div, inside the div we have a span and etc and etc. Of course this is not the full hierarchy, probably the height of the tree is a bit uh, higher in our case. And let's say we are looking for this B tag somewhere. Of course we have some other leaves in this tree. Okay, so how the expat does work? So it will start with the root then it will go probably left to the head and then it will go back to the body. Then the body probably will go left and another left until there is no left left. And then it will go right and then it will go left again. So we, we found the B tag. It took us one, two, three, four, five, six steps. But what would happen if this, the desired tag was on the most right hand side. So we can continue. We have the 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then we go back 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 steps. So there are some cases that in order to locate a tag by using an expert, I will have to go for 19 steps or 100 steps. I don't really know. It's probably as big as the, uh, the tree. So we, if we look at the worst case scenario, expat can have a really poor performance. I hope that this was convincing. Now we'll talk about CSS selectors. Basically, everything can be located using this method. We can even use the CSS selector to locate an ID. By the way, we can use an expat as well. Locating CSS selector is a very powerful tool. And if you want to study a bit more about it, you can check out our video in YouTube in the link down below. Let's go back to our project. This example is from the previous lesson. 
let's start with a fresh example we'll call it example 2 of course we'll build our main in IntelliJ and I remind you in order to use the, the shortcut for a main it's PSVM and then you press enter we'll start by defining our web driver line number seven of course will open a new web driver for us we'll start by navigating to wikipedia.org if you're not sure about the address you can go back to the web uh, browser and you can copy that and paste it you see there is HTTPS and www.wikipedia.org let's run it here you can see that the chrome driver was uh, up there was a new instance of chrome and then our wikipedia page was open we want to locate the input box we'll right click and inspect since it didn't, didn't mark the desired element we'll use the square and the arrow and then we'll locate the element now we can copy the ID the desired ID we'll go back to our code we'll declare a new web element and we'll call it search box then we'll use driver find element by ID we can paste the ID of course it's a string you can see that the by now is marked in red we need to import it because our file doesn't recognize it our class here you can see the full path and that it was imported from selenium here we located the element now we have a web element we can start it interacting with it whenever i'll type search box and then dot i have all the actions that i can perform using this search box in this instance I want to use send keys send keys will insert the text for me it will send the text to this element so let's start by running it and to see if everything is working properly right click run as you can see wikipedia was open and selenium was inserted to this input box as you can also see the browsers were left open a good practice is to close it whenever you finish with your test if you want to see all the options that you have you can just click driver find element by here you can see we have css selectors tag name name expat id class name link text and etc in order to use an expat just for you to know let's inspect the element again whenever we mouse over the element we can right click on it and then we'll choose copy and we can choose the expat or the full expat let's have a look at the full expat and we'll paste it here here is the hierarchy of this element starting with the root with the html then the body and then all the containers that contains this element until we reach the tag of the input also we can copy the relative expat let's see the difference here our browser was smart enough to give us the id because this uh, element has an id so we don't need a relative expat so yeah it's the same as using the id in this case but think about more um, more challenging locators more challenging elements to locate so we'll have to carefully consider if you to use expat or other stuff some other locators that we have by tag name we can locate the element by its html tag of course if it's just a general tag such as a div it will be very difficult to locate the specific element that we are looking for 
but sometimes even the tag name can be unique. So if we go back to Wikipedia, this input tag, as you can see, we can uh, control F or command F if you're using Mac. And you can see here that input appears eight times. This is the type of the, the CSS uh, section. So we don't refer to this one. Let's enter it. And we have an input hidden somewhere. We have another input and this input. So we have several input in this web page. So input is not the best practice in this case because it's not unique. We need to use a different locator. But let's say we have a special tag that appears only here. So you might use an input. There is also a special implementation that we came up with and it's called locate an element by a sub element. If you want to expand your knowledge about it, you can refer to our video and you can click in the link down below. Let's try now to locate the search box by its name. We'll declare a new web element. We'll call it search box by name. It's equals to driver find element by name. And we'll transfer the name that we just copied. It's search. Usually using names have some logic because usually the programmer that have uh, given this uh, tag, this name had some logic behind it. So in this case, we can assume that this name is also unique. It's not like an ID, but probably sufficient for our purposes. You can see here first, we located this tag by the ID and then we sent keys, the string selenium, and then we located it by the name search. And then we sent the keys rain. Those strings were concatenated because we haven't clear between them. If we want to uh, have the second string only, we need to use search box dot clear. So it will clear all the previous text that was already sent to it. Let's right click and run it. We haven't seen it because it was so quick, but as you can see now it's written only rain. Other locators that we have is the link text. We can locate an element by the text that appears on the link tag or locating by partial link text. It's not very common to use those locators, but you can use them as well if you think they are unique enough. In this slide, you can see the example that we just saw in Wikipedia. Now let's make our test much more interesting. Let's try to locate the search button. Here we have the button. It doesn't have any name or ID, but we have this uh, pure button or pure button primary progressive. We are not sure if this is unique, but let's try and find out. Let's try and search for the class pure button in this page. Let's copy that. We'll control F or we'll click command F. A pure button appears twice. The first time it appears in the CSS. You can see it doesn't look like HTML. So uh, we can ignore this one. And the second time it appears here. So this pure button appears only here. So we can treat this one as a unique identifier. Also probably the second class name, the pure button primary progressive will also appear only once. This one looks unique just by the, the long name that it contains. As you can see here, yes, it only appears here. So we can either use the pure button class name or the second one. Let's paste it and then we'll talk about a common error that a lot of developers are doing. We'll declare a new web element. We'll call it click search button. We'll use driver find element. This time it will be by class name. And we'll paste the class name here. I've copied one of them. If you want to locate the element by another locator, we can use a CSS selector. This is a bit more complicated. I encourage you to check out our video regarding this issue. But if you want to go this way, in order to do that, 
we first start with the HTML tag and then we copy all of it. This uh, data dash JS L Z one zero N. We don't even know what it is. It probably was auto generated by the, so by a software that was generating this web page. But here we have the search input button. Here we have created a unique locator that probably doesn't appear anywhere in the screen. And we can use that one instead of, let's say we, the class name wasn't unique and we still uh, prevented the usage of an expat. Let's overview our test so far. We start by opening the Chrome driver, then we navigate to Wikipedia. We're locating the search box, we're sending keys, we're clearing the, the selenium that we just typed, and then we locate it again by name. Then we send keys, which are rain. And then we find the element by the class name. And then we locate the search button by a class name. And then we click on it. Let's right click and run it. And let's make sure that th this test is working. As you can see, we have reached a Wikipedia page which contains the title rain. Now I want to uh, go over with you with a common mistake that a lot of developers are doing, especially when they just start with that. If we look again at the search button, we can see that the class of this element is combined by two classes. So if you'll try and copy all of it, you can see that there is a space here. And if you'll try to locate this element by two classes, Selenium won't know what to do with that. So this won't work for you. Whenever you use a class name, please make sure that you're not copying more than one, that the class name that you just used doesn't contain spaces. Let's say we've typed rain and we click the button. How do we make sure that we've reached the correct page? So here we have the title, the title is rain. So let's try and make sure that the title is the one that we are looking for. You can see that this title has an ID. It's called first heading. It's because it's an ID, we need to look no further. We'll just copy the ID. So after the click, let's declare a new web element. We'll call it result page title. We'll say driver find element by ID and then we'll supply the ID that we just copied. Then we can declare the string. We'll call it heading text. Then we'll refer to the web element, the results page title, and we'll click get text. Now we can ask if the heading text equals to rain, we can print a success message, otherwise, we can print a fail message. Let's go over our test. So we're starting with navigating to Wikipedia. Then we are locating the search box by name. We'll send, we are sending the keys. In this case, it's rain. Then we are locating the click search button. Then we are clicking on it and then we are trying to locate the page title. We're getting the text of this title and then we are trying to see if the heading text does contain rain. If it does, we'll print yes, otherwise we'll print no. Let's right click on it and run it to see if everything is working properly. Here you can see that in the console output, it was printed yes, which means that the title that we just found contains the text or it was equals to the text rain. Of course, we were lucky and we didn't have to wait for this title to appear. In Selenium, in many cases, you would like to use weights in order to determine if one of the elements does appear. We'll talk about weights in the fourth and final lesson. Locating several web elements by a single locator 
can also be very beneficial. We would get a list of a web element and also we could iterate this list in order to examine the element that we just desired. What do I mean by that? Let's have a look at an example. Let's head over to heraldtribune.com. If we'll right click on the menu, so let's try to figure out which one of the, those elements are each of the elements of the menu. You can see here that this A tag contains the news. Also, we have a CSS selector that we can use, which called nav item. We have between nine to 10 selectors here. I'm not sure if the, the one with the arrow that pointing down is also an element. Let's try a uh, copy this one and let's see if we can reach any one of those elements by a simple for each loop. Let's start with opening a new file. We'll call it example two underline two. We'll build our main and then we'll declare web driver driver equals new Chrome driver. Then let's copy the URL heraldtribune.com. Now we'll declare a list of web elements. We'll call it nav menu items. Now we'll refer to the driver, find element by class name, find elements in plural. And this is the class name that I just copied. Now I expect to get those 10 elements, those 10 items of the nav menu. Let's try to see if we are correct. Let's print the size of this list. So let's right click and run it. Oh, so there are nine. Maybe I miscalculated it. Let's try to run it with a for each loop to see if we get all the element that we desire. So for each loop in Java, it's four. We have the parentheses web element. Let's call it nav menu item. Inside nav menu items. Here, we will print the nav menu item dot get text. Let's see if all the items contains the text of the nav menu items. We'll rerun it. Okay, let's see what happened. Yes, you can see the size is nine and then we have all the list that we've just seen news, sports, tickets, lifestyle, and etc. Because all of these elements have the same class name, we'll start by identifying at least one of them. Let's say we're looking for a ticket. This is the, the one that we want to click. So here we can have a condition which is telling us before we will start with the condition, it is a better practice It is a better practice to get the text and store it in a variable. So we'll call it nav menu item text. And then we'll ask if nav menu item equals ticket with a capital T. In this case, we'll click. Now we expect that after that after we'll navigate to Hello Tribune, it will click on this nav menu item. Let's run it. As you can see, the ticket one was clicked, but we have an exception. Let's try to understand why we have this exception. 
we have the stale element reference exception, which is one of the most popular exceptions that we'll get in Selenium. What happened that I was in a different web page and I was iterating over the, the, this list that of the web element that I had. And after I clicked the ticket, I, I was continuing to iterate over the list because I wasn't in the end of it. In order to prevent that, we'll just break out the loop in case that we'll find the text that we desire. Let's rerun it. As you can see, we clicked and everything was working properly. Here you can see the usage of web elements and how useful it is. In the next lesson, we'll study about test ng and test annotation. We will make your code more reusable and we'll also discuss the project architecture and structure. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It helps to push the channel forward and to, for us to make more content like this for you. If you have any suggestion or any comment, please do it in the comment section down below. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to our channel and you want to be notified whenever one of these awesome videos is being released, please do it now. Until then, have a great time.